Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to get query parameters from an input from a client. So the query parameters are different. Um, we're producing this and pushing our changes to a live production uh, Heroku app. And so if you want to follow along with this tutorial effectively, you should probably go back and do and start from uh, the beginning of managing packages if you're new. Otherwise, we're continuing on. Another common way to get input from the client is by encoding the data after the route path using a query string. Okay, so instead of doing this, we're going to be adding things to the tail. So something like whatever, you know? And the question mark makes it so our uh, server reads things differently. The query string is delimited by a question mark and includes a field equals value couples. Each couple is separated by an ampersand. Uh, express can parse the data from the query string and populate the object request.query. Some characters, like percentage signs, cannot be used in URLs and have to be encoded in a different format before you can send them. If you use the API for JavaScript, you can use specific methods to encode and decode these characters. So our root path, if we go to library, but our actual request, meaning what we actually type into the thing, is library question, user ID equals 546, and then the book ID. So we're going to get a request query object on our server with an object in it that is equal to, where the user ID is equal to 546, user ID, the string of 546, book ID, book ID, uh, 6754, 6754. So we want to build an API endpoint mounted at the get forward slash name. Okay, so... You know, here we have the get input the query parameters. So we want to say we're going to go a uh, uh, app app dot get, and then we're going to say have a, the route be forward slash name, and then we're going to do something else, right? Uh, we want to respond with a JSON document taking the structure of name, first name, last name. The first and last name parameters should be encoded in a query string, so like this. Um, so yeah, locally, what will this look like? If we went to local and we had a query string, what we're gonna do is go to forward slash name, and then we're gonna have a query string. So it starts with a question mark, and then we have what looks like uh, user ID equals 546 and book ID equals that, separated by an ampersand. So this is separated by an ampersand, so first, last name. Now if we run this, well, nothing happens because we don't even have our server started. So in the following exercise, you're going to receive data from a post request at the same name route path. If you want, you can use the method app.route.getHandler. Uh, well, let's just cross this bridge when we get there. So for now, we'll just make it so we can get a app.get and so forward slash name. And then we're going to have a function which does a request response. And here is our callback function. Um, and so what do we want to do? So our request, our query parameters, right? Request.query. So if I were to console.log, uh, request.query. Now let's save this. Now I've got, I'm just console logging this so I can inspect the request.query object. So we're saying our request and it's the dot query. So now if I go npm start and we go back to our local host and we pass this guy in, we log out the object, which is request.query, which is great, right? This is exactly, now we can tell that we've got this object being passed in. So request.query is equal to first and last. And so if we were to, you know, now we can structure this because we have an object that's like that. We want a response to be name. So we want to say, and it says that we want to return a JSON document, which I'm not exactly sure if that means, I mean, it should just be res.json. So we're going to respond with a JSON and we're going to pass in an object in which we have our name is the key and the value is going to be a string with the first name and last name. So we can say request.query dot because request.query and then dot first. So request.query dot first and then we can add an a space in here because we want it to be the first name and then the space and then the last name. And then here we'll add um, request.query dot uh, last. Yeah, last, which will make it so we pass in whatever our last name is. Here we're passing first name and last name in there. Uh, 
Okay, cool. So now I'm going to get rid of the console log and we're just going to respond with the JSON. So I'm saving this and then I'm going to cancel our server and then restart it by pressing up to restart quickly. And here I'll say instead of first name, I'll say useful. Here I'll say programmer. So we're passing it in, at, we're passing a query parameter in with our first and last name. And that responds with JSON uh, with a name and then it's putting it together into a single string. And I believe that's what we want. Cool, so we can cancel our local server. And now what we have is it working on our local server, but what happens if we do this, <clears throat> if we go to our production server on Heroku and we pass this in? Well, we should get not found because we haven't set this up. We have not pushed our local code. This guy is not on our production server. So that's what we want to do now. So to do that, we'll do use git and Heroku. So git status, we can see we've got my app has been adjusted. Uh, git diff, we see that we've added a app here. So we want to say git add, and then we say git commit add period, which means add all the changes. And then we say git commit dash m, and in there we're going to pass in a message. So we're going to say add a name API endpoint, which accepts query parameter. And so now we've committed the change, and now we want to push the change to our production app. Git push Heroku uh, head master. So we're pushing it to the head master branch of our Heroku server. So if I come over here, I can look at our logs. Well, here we're pushing our the code that's on our local machine to our production environment. And so once we finish pushing the code up, we're going to say, okay, build succeeded, and it's compressing, uh, done, launching. Okay, so we get to this launching point. Once we look over here, it says state change from starting to up. So our production server is now reflecting the changes. Uh, so our, yeah, so the state of the server is up. And so if we come back to our um, main server page and we refresh the page here with the same query parameter that we had in before, we get exactly what we were looking for, a JSON response with a key value of name and then a uh, useful programmer, which has been adjusted by this. Uh, we could say uh, useful uh, programmer with a capital P and a capital U, and that will get us a JSON response with the same thing. And so this is exactly what we want. Uh, to pass the tests, we can copy the root URL of our project, and we go back over to Free Code Camp. And in our solution, we can just put this guy in there. And I uh, sure hope this is right. Awesome. Pass another one. Uh, <clears throat> again, most uh, you know, node apps are going to be using arrow parameters. This does the exact same thing. Um, this is something that you probably want to adjust on your applications. Uh, I'm not going to push this up right now because I'm just going to do it. We're going to adjust this code in the future lesson. Um, but for now, we've passed that test. And so we've built a... API endpoint, and we've deployed that to a real production application, which receives uh, parameters, so, or uh, not parameters, but query uh, data, which is great. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and we'll see you in the next lesson.